viewers to another episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2024 GCE Mathematics paper team. So if you haven't seen the other episode, please check out on our YouTube channel or download the companion app that you are seeing on the screen. You find a lot of resources that is going to be helpful to ensure that you armor and ace that exam of yours. Let us look at question 5. 5a evaluate 6x to the power 5 minus x to the power 4 plus 3x square minus 1 with respect to x over the interval 2 to negative 1 or negative 1 to 2. So let us start by handling question A then come to question B later. So question A we need to just know the rules of integration. So when you are integrating, when you are given a function y equals ax to the power n, to integrate this one, this function that we need to integrate, it means this y becomes ax n plus 1 over n plus 1. That's what it means when we are integrating. So using this principle, let us integrate this function. Then we evaluate it by substituting negative 1 and the negative 2, which is negative 2, then minus the values of negative 1. That's the principle that we use. So the value of y would be, we are going to have 6x5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1. That's the principle we're using then minus. We are going to have x to the power 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1. Then plus, we are going to have 3 x 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. Then let me just create space. Since I've already explained what this principle is, we do the same for x. Now for, I mean for 1. So for 1, what it means is this as x to the power 0, then we have a 1e. So the new power it will be plus 1 over 0 plus 1. Because now we are looking for the definite integral. We are not going to add a c, a constant, because we only add a constant if we are not evaluating the value. So now we can simplify this. So we are going to have 6 divide by 6 is a 1 because 5 plus 1 is a 6 so we're going to have x to the power 6 because this one and this one cancels then we go next we're going to have it's a negative we're going to have x to the power 5 over 5 then plus we are going to have 2 plus 1 is a 3 3 into a 3 is a 1 so this one and this one cancels so we're going to have x to the power 3 then 1 into anything you see that thing then 0 plus 1 is a 1 so it will be minus x to the power 1 which is that so we have now this function so the next step is for last now to find the values the values over what, what interval this interval these are the values that we need to find so the first thing is start with the values of the values of 2 which is a bigger number so i'll use different colors so that you're able to see so we're going to have 2 to the power 6 then minus 2 to the power 5 over 5 then plus 2 to the power 3 then minus 2 this one so what i've done is I've substituted the values of 2 first. That's the first interval. The second interval now, we minus because we are looking for the the value over an interval. So if the curve, the curve this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, then this is the x-axis. If the curve moves like this, then you're looking for this is negative 1, then this is say positive 2. We are looking for this area. That's the value you're looking for under this curve. So, let what we are taking out. Then it's going to be now negative 1 to the power 6. Then minus negative 1 to the power 5 over 5. 5. Then plus negative 1 to the power 3. 
then minus negative 1. So this one, we need to simplify it, eh? then take it away from that. So we can use your calculator. The first thing that you will know is eh? 2 to the power 6 is 64. That's the first thing. Then 2 to the power 5 is eh? 32. 2 to the power 3 is 8. So let me just write this. So we're looking for the value. So like I said, 2 to the power 6 is 64. Then minus uh, 2 to the power 5 divided by 5, it will be 32 divided by 5. Then 2 to the power 3 is 8, so plus 8. Then minus 2, the first part. Then the second part because it's a 1. So this one will be positive 1. This one will be negative times negative 1 less to the power 5 is negative 1 times negative is a positive. So we are going to have a plus. So this will be a 1. Uh, this one on top it will be a 1. So it will be 1 over 5. Then it will be negative 1. Then it will be positive 1. So that's how we are going to deal with it. So we are going to have, like I've said, we are going to have a 1. Then 1 over 5 then minus 1, then plus 1. Simplifying these, you can use your calculator. Once you use your calculator, what you discover is 64 plus 8 plus negative 2, it will give you 70. So you are going to have 70 minus 32 over 5 minus uh, you will notice that this one and this one cancel, so we are going to just have 1 over 1 over 5. Then you can simplify this one using a calculator. Once you simplify using a calculator, you discover that you are going to have nothing but this 63.6 minus 1.2. But you can avoid these steps. You can just use a calculator to give you straight 62.4. 62.4 is the value. Once you do this, you should be able to get these three marks, which is in here. Then we move to question B, which is 5 marks. Question B leads, the flow chart below shows the steps that are carried out in calculating and displaying the area of a sector given its radius R and angle of the sector theta. So we have start, then after we start you enter radius and the theta. Then the question is asked, is R less than zero? If yes, you print error, R is not valid. If the answer is no, meaning R is greater than zero, you proceed to calculate the area, which is given by theta divided by 360 times pi times radius to the power two. Then you print the area, then you stop. The question is, write a pseudocode corresponding to the flow chart program above. So what is key here is indentation. That is what is key. So we start with, so start. So you are starting this one. What are you starting? You enter. So I'm going to indent, enter, R and theta. So it's this indentation that is important. This one, indentation, this one is what is important in coding. Then next, you test, you're asking a question, is R less than zero? So to ask that question, you use if. If R is less than zero, what are you going to do? You print. So print error. R is not varied. Then you put this in inverted quotation because it's a text so if it's a text in programming you put it in inverted quotation mark so that the language understands what you are trying to say then next what happens if that's not the case which is now represented by else and this should be in the straight line else find this which is in theta over 360 then multiply by pi then multiply by r okay 
then you can either use to the power 2 okay use this one to the power 2 it's the same or alternatively if you want you can do R you repeat R R times R you repeat it more than once it's the same as that power then after you do that what comes you would have calculated two conditions would have been met then you say end if so if the calculation has been done you end and if then next the print area should be in line with him this should be in line where the print is that should be in the same line so print now you are printing me a then stop what is key is this should be in the same line then this in the same line then this indentation so this is what is the key so we are starting with the first indentation the second indentation then you come you do everything then you start going backward the backward indentation that is what is the key once you can do this then you are good you get these five marks thank you for joining me in this episode please join me in the next episode as we look at question six